Hey, this is Paxton. I'm going to show you my first tutorial video on Arma 3 scripting. Uh, the intended audience for this is going to be people who want to learn Arma 3 scripting with no coding background. So I'm going to have to start at the basics. I'm going to start with how to learn. Uh, hopefully my videos will be a good source of that. Uh, the biz wiki from by Bohemia has all the commands and a lot of information on it. And there's a lot of people from the community who contribute to that. That helps as well. Um, but learning or using the wiki a lot of times scripting knowledge is needed to understand a lot of it. So the basics is you're really going to have to find resources. Hopefully this video is going to be a good source for you in the series. I'm planning on making several of them because as with other languages, there's a lot of tutorial videos that break things down for you. Uh, a lot of Arma 3 tutorials seem to be more as how-to videos, like how to shoot rockets from a hunter or how to parrot jump every time you log in or respawn. And they just show you how to basically copy and paste the code, where to place the code at, and you do that one particular thing. But when you go to add something you want to in your mission, say you don't want to shoot rockets from a hunter, maybe you want to shoot uh, chem lights from a hunter, uh, this will help you learn to be able to do things like that. Um, do what you want to do. If you understand language, you understand how to code, you understand how to script, if you understand what you're doing and not just have a collection of how-tos, you'll be much better off. A lot of people ask, what programming language should I learn to learn Harma? And then uh, the thing with that is you're asking, oh, what sports should I learn to learn to play football? Should I learn to play? Yeah, you know, it's you're you're gonna be learning two things at once. Script is scripting a programming language? No, it's not, but it's similar. Uh, if you want to learn C plus plus, you're going to learn C plus plus. You're not going to learn ARMA scripting. But that being said, if you do have a background with a programming language, learning ARMA scripting is going to be a lot quicker for you because of certain things you will understand or pick up on quicker. But if you want to learn ARMA scripting, learn ARMA scripting. All right, lesson one. Let's, let's get right into it and we're going to learn variables, what a variable is and what it does. Um, the main purpose of a variable is going to be to hold a certain data type in the memory of the engine. Um, there are different types of data types. What a, before we get into that, let's talk about a variable, exactly what a variable is. A variable, um, there's a couple different types. You have a magic variable, which is something that's already named and something you cannot use again. We'll get, I'll show you some of those in a minute. Uh, and what we're mainly going to look at here is what's called a user-defined variable. It's something that you name and you put your data type or a data type into it and use it throughout your script or throughout your mission, depending on whether it's a private variable or a global variable. But what a variable does, it holds a data type and you have different types of data. For example, you have integers which are whole numbers like 1, 0, 5, 2, so on. You have floats, which on the top right see 1.25, that is a float. Um, that's not as important in ARMA scripting because you don't have to initialize your variables, but of some languages, if you're declaring something an integer, you can't add a float variable to it because that will give you a no, not float variable, a float um, data type, because I'll give you an error. It allows you a little bit of protection from renaming a variable something other than what you want it to be. Uh, Armor scripting does not have that, 
protection so you just have to be careful making sure you name stuff or you put the right data types inside your variables you have string what a string is is the text and it's going to be when you define it it needs to be in quotation marks like you see here that stores that text into memory as you see it as the human eye reads it hey Johnny that's what's going to be held in memory and so on with my other examples here string it's a, all it is is text boolean real simple true or false a lot of times true and false instead of using the the words true or false you can use zero as false or one as true an array arrays get a little more complicated but it's not difficult all it is it's a type of variable that holds multiple data types for example in this bracket here you see three elements inside this array and it's three different data types it's separated by the comma you have the player then you have zero which is a data type and then you have true which is a data type player is an object we're not going to get into that yet um, the one at the bottom it ha it holds five different integers into one variable if you name the variable let's say you name it array or something I'll, I'll have to show you I can't think of something but it will hold in your one variable one three five six and seven and then you can access all that data inside that variable the bottom one holds two elements which is two strings then you have a multiple multiple <laughs> multi-dimensional array which well all this is is the same thing as before but it holds an array inside an array like the one here the first element is an array of five elements and then the second one separated by a comma is another bracket with a set of integers inside that four the four elements so it's in the bottom one you have three strings and a boolean in your first element and then in your second element you have four elements of just different variables and uh, another boolean and then magic variables i mentioned them a minute ago uh, these you cannot name anything these because they are already predefined uh, the ones on the right our commands or some of the commands I just threw some up there but if you if you uh, initialize X so one you're going to get an error same thing if this you can't do that your variables have to be when you name your variable it has to be neat nothing that the scripts engine already uses so defining variables say you want to define it in global scope which meaning it's not just available in that file or that script it's also available across your pc or a local machine um, these do not have an underscore in front of them these you have to be careful with because since it's in a different file you could be using them around it could um, you could have some errors or you could access var say if you name some var here with no underscore and then another script to use var again you may change the value on something you don't want to change so to give yourself a little protection you can name stuff with an underscore in front of it so that it is private scope and it is only available in the scope or that file of the script it prevents errors and so forth all right let's get to some scripting um, so go ahead and open arma 3 you can save a mission in the editor save it in user missions um, this will put it in your mission folder, which is user documents missions, and then the name you named it is going to have like dot stratus dot all this or dot a vr, depending on which map you saved. Um, in that folder, you want to create a file, call it init dot sqf, and it saves and save it as all file types. Don't save it as text file because it's not going to work. Make sure you do all file types, and that way it has the dot sqf extension on it. Then you can open up text editor notepad notepad plus plus is very common a lot of people use that one there's also some uh, syntax highlighters for that and then um, i use intellij uh, mainly use that for java programming but i've been using github a lot um, it's really great for that 
uh, and it's also really good for uh, armor scripting as well I've learned so let's get started um, I'm in my init.sqf file here and some SQF names are already used by the engine. The engine looks for them, the script engine looks for them, like init.sqf, init local player.sqf. Um, just certain names are already predefined, just like a variable, just like the underscore x variable. Underscore x equals one. You can't you can't do that because x is already predefined by the script engine. Uh, same if you're in init.sqf, if you want to name something that, you're, you're going to have errors unless you're using the init.sqf file. Now you can do, say, my init.sqf file. The script engine would never call that. You have to call it. So just give you a little insight on naming conventions. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to introduce you to one command here called sleep and this is going to tell the engine to sleep for one second and if the semicolon the semicolon tells the script engine that this line of code is done the command sleep one that's it go to the next thing if you don't have semicolons placed correctly you're going to have errors all right and most people are familiar with the command hint if not we will use that in a, in a minute but I want to start out with a uh, uh, system chat. System chat is just like hint. Actually, we can use both. System chat and hint. Both of these are commands and they're expecting a string after them. It, so, in this command, the, the engine is looking for a, a string to display. So, we can display hello. Again, we're done with that line of code. Semicolon, hint hello all right so sleep on system chat hello and then start the mission you see down the bottom left you get hello um in the top right you have the hint and i made a mistake Let's see if i had any code after this i would have had an error say i did another hint See, so this is going to give me an error here. See, so I'm getting an error. The reason why is because I wasn't paying attention and I put my semicolon inside that. So the engine is still looking for more hints to display, and then it comes across another command. It says, oh no, this is wrong. So make sure you put your semicolons right. All right, so let's say we want to get into variables now. Um, this sleep is not necessary. The only reason I'm using sleep is to make sure that system chat is displayed after the mission started. So this is not necessary. Actually, you know, let's just do away with system chat. Do away with sleep one for here. We'll use it in a minute, but we're going to start initialize some variables. Let's get an underscore, so it'd be private. And let's name it my hint. And let's say hello. So hint command here is expecting a string. So we're going to send a string in. It's going to be my hint. We no longer use quotation marks because this is stored as a string and then when we, we start the mission, we'll have the hint in the top right. Uh, it says hello. It doesn't say my hello. It says hello. That's what's stored in. All right. And anytime you make any changes in a script, make sure you save the file or it's not going to work. Um, that's why I don't recommend doing it this way, how I'm doing it in IntelliJ to beginners because they don't get in the habit to use hint. I mean, I'm sorry, um, to uh, save the file. That's a habit you got to be in is save, 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 save. But this saves it automatically, which is kind. It doesn't, it's not good practice. You just have to, because if, 
I'm used to saving. It's second nature for me to save a file. It actually, this actually bothers me a little bit because I don't have to save because it saves it for me. So it's kind of, I don't recommend it for beginners. All right, so we're going to hit hello and let's do my hint two. You can use a variable in your variable names at the end. And let's do world. And we're going to use that same command I showed you a minute ago, sleep. We'll sleep for one second. And then we're going to hint my hint two. I'm going to try to get through this stuff pretty quick because it's pretty simple. Hello world. If you weren't looking top right hand corner, you probably missed it. All right, so let's do a third hint. My hint three equals one. Now, if you're paying attention, you know that I just saved a variable into my hint, and my hint. And, and the command hint is expecting a string. So if you pass a variable to hint, what happens? Hello world. And then you get an error. I'm showing script errors. Make sure you start parameters. You put up show script errors because a lot of times, especially if you're beginning, you're not going to know there was an error and you're not going to know why your script wasn't working. But if you're showing script errors, it will tell you. And let me show you real quick. There will be a hash, hashtag or pound sign uh, right before your error. Like right here it says before the hint. See the hint was expecting a string and it got a variable. And it'll tell you down there, tell you the file type, and it'll tell you the line and the file type. All right. I think I'm about to get interrupted. All right, I'm back. Now, let's see if I remember where I was at. Hint three, I uh, was showing you that there was an error when you passed a variable into the command hint. So if you wanted one to be the hint, put quotation marks around it. And then you'll see hello world and then one. All right, now you may wonder what if you want my hint three to be a variable and you want to display it there's a command you can do actually my hint I mean that doesn't make much sense say it was say you had a um, my kills variable so you're counting how many people you kill and it changes but you want to be able to display that um, my kills uh, my kills you'll do a str and put that inside parentheses what this does is it takes the my kills variable, converts it to a string, and therefore the hint can accept it. So let's run do the test here. Hello world one. That way you can display a variable. Now what we're going to do is let's get into actually let's do my hint equals hello and then we'll do my hint my hint see this is common common in programming language you use what's called camel casing and the first word will be lowercase for things like variables the second word in that variable will be uppercase um, that makes it easy to read and variables easier to understand um, in my hint, it, it's not as obvious, but if you had a variable like, uh, for example, my player kills, it makes it much more easier to read than if everything was lowercase. That's why you'll see camel casing a lot. But we have uh, two hints, which that's just redefining the first hint. Um, we have my array. And my array is going to do array. You need brackets, and we're going to put my hint, and then 
my hint two inside that. So the first element will be my hint. The second element will be my hint two. So what we're going to do is we want we're going to so you can't if you try to hint my array, this is going to give you an error because again, hint is expecting a string, it's not expecting an array. So how would you use this? What you would do is you'll use the command select and zero, which what select does, it's selecting the index zero in my array. Now this is a two element array, and since these are indexes, the indexes start with zero, one, and then if you had more variables in your array, this one here would be two, three, so a four element array will have, the index will be zero, one, two, three. I will get into that a little more later, but that is very important that you understand, or you'll be running around in circles. And now, this here will, will select the zero index of my array, which is my hint. But in order to pass that as a string into hint, you have to put that in parentheses so that this will return a string to that. So then we should get hello. And then if we want to sleep, we'll sleep one. And then we're going to hint my array select one. And then this will do the same thing we showed earlier. Hello world. And only other thing is we had multi-dimensional array. Let's let's go ahead and do that one. I'm going to end it after that. We're going to make a multi-dimensional array. Um, actually, you know what? Let's keep that the same. Hello world, my array. Then we'll have my array two equals. Um, let's think a couple more variables. Um, my hint mint. That's fine. Let's use mint. That's cool. Mint three equals Paxton. Mint. Four equals is back. Exclamation point. Whatever. Doing it on the fly, so make fun of me if you want. So then my array two will be mint three and mint four. Then we're going to have our multi dimensional array. Let's call it multi array equals. Oops, it's going to be my array and my array two. Here we have an array here, which is that one, an array there. And how do we do that? Select my array, select zero, which this is going to now need to be multi array, select zero, which selects first array and then you select again oops select again zero to select the first element in that array I hope I'm not losing you here and then my multi array we're going to do a lot more arrays later so if you don't quite understand this um, don't worry select zero so what this does is this selects the second element in this array and then selects the first element in that array. So can you guess what it's going to say? Hello Paxton. And you know what? I'm going to end it from there because Getting into arrays can be a whole subject of itself, but I serve the purpose of talking about variables today. I've showed you some usage of them. 
uh, more about the rays and the integers. Integers are a little more simple, text pretty simple. Um, there's a couple things you can do with text that gets a little more advanced. Uh, maybe I'll do a video and break down each variable and the uses of them for the next videos. So thank you for watching and happy scripting.